Hello and welcome to the Farbank Life Vision School. I'm your host, Simon Gorzer, and this episode is going to examine the essential, basic, hugely important things called knots. The fly fishing knots that you as an angler need to know to have success on the water. The first knot I'm going to look at is probably a knot most fly fishers are not going to use or too often. And once you've used it, you're probably not going to use it again. And why? Well, I'm going to show you how to attach the backing that you've bought to the fly reel you've bought. And the reason you probably won't do it most often is that generally a fly shop is going to do this for you and rig it all up. But who knows? One day you might have to do that. And I'd like to run through all the knots in this episode just so you can put it together, whatever happens if something goes wrong. So we're going to look at attaching backing to a fly reel with a knot called the arbor knot. To do it, first of all, I'm going to actually show you this in this beautiful bright purple thing. Because the one thing about the bright purple is that it's going to be easy to see. It's fat. You'll see it against this table here. And it's going to be perfect. So imagine this is my backing. And this is the end of the backing. The very first thing you do is tie an overhand knot in the end. This is called a stop knot. And it's just a simple overhand knot. Or in the UK, we call this a granny knot. Don't know why, but it's called that. So then I pull it tight. And then I'm going to chop off the tab pretty close to the end of this overhand knot, chuck away the rubbish. And as I said, this is called the stop knot. The knot itself is relatively simple. I'm going to take about 10 to 12 inches of material, of backing, and just give you some terminology that I'll use right throughout this episode is the, the loose little end here is called the tag end. And the other end is like the standing end. So I'm going to be using those phrases quite often throughout this episode. What I do is I like to take the standing end holding in my left hand because I'm right handed and the little tag end with my right hand and I fold the tag end behind the standing end and pull a couple of inches and quite simply bring the tag end over my thumb underneath and up through this whole loop here and then tuck it down through where my thumb is. And so in reality, all I'm doing is an overhand knot like this, but around this standing end. And I pull it tight and you can see now I pull and you jam that stop knot right against it and that means everything is secure and it's not going to come undone when you hook a fish that goes all the way out, takes all your backing. And what you've created, if you've done it right, is a slip knot. See, just a loop that slides. So once you've got to your reel, what you're actually going to be doing is taking the spool off the reel. I'll show you this in real, with the real stuff in a moment. And then simply you take this slip knot, put it over the reel, tighten the slip knot up, and then you start winding your backing in. Okay, so that's nice and easy in the visible purple stuff. Let's do that with backing because there's a couple of great tips that I think make it a lot easier for you as a, a novice fly fisher, just kind of putting this all together. And the first tip I can give you is that don't make the mistake of tying without removing the spool. So you want to remove the spool from the reel. And then this one I've done myself so many times that this is a really essential one. Before you get all enthusiastic about tying the knot, take the end of your backing and thread it through a hole in the reel. Right? This, this one's got little holes like this. So I'm going to thread it because I'm a right hand wind cut angler. In other words, I wind the reel with a right. I'm going to thread it through the second hole on the right side. If you're a left hand wind angler, you're going to have the reel facing this way. This is where the handle is going to be. And you would thread it through the second hole here. So you'll see why in a sec. So I'm going to thread that through pull through all the backing I need, lay down the reel frame itself, and then very simply just tie that knot. A little overhand knot first, pull super tight, snip off the tag, and then just do that exact same knot. So there's my tag end, here's my standing end, fold the tag end underneath the standing end, I like to pinch it with my thumb and index finger, pull this tag over the top, come underneath the loop and back through where my thumb is. And there's that overhand knot there. And then, as I said, I like to pull till the stop knot wedges, like that. The stop knot's now wedged, so that won't come undone. I'm going to open this loop up, slide it over the spool frame, pull nice and tight, and that's attached. Now, 
you can see the value of having threaded it through first, because when you put the two together, what's going to happen is the line is all set. So if you put that knot on before you thread it through here, you're going to do this and you go, oh, shoot, what can I do now? Because it's not threaded through the winding part. So that's a real important tip. I put my spool together. And then this part is going to be real much easier if you put it on the butt section of a rod. So have a butt section of a rod handy. Put it onto the rod as you like. Be, me being a right hand winder, I'm going to have the handle on the right. And then as you can see here, I am now set up. I get the backing here, I get my mate to hold the spool of backing, or I stick it between my knees and a pen, and just simply wind away. And that's the best way of attaching backing to a reel, and that's called the Arbor Knot. The next knot I'm going to show you is called the Double Surgeon Loop Knot. That's the name of it. And what it's for is attaching a fly line that you've bought, a beautiful fly line like this, to the backing that you've already put onto the fly reel. It's a very easy knot to tie. Uh, you actually use it in a couple of places. We'll see, see this knot again very shortly. Um, but let me show you. It's a fairly simple knot. It's based on the overhand knot again. So many of these fishing knots are based on the humble, simple overhand knot, which in the UK, just a little trivia for you, is called the granny knot. Don't know why, but that's what it's called. Uh, so I always used to call this the granny knot. Let me show you. Got our beautiful purple fat stuff here. I'm gonna pull off quite a length of it. I'm gonna pull off two to three feet of it. And I'm actually gonna make a large loop by folding the tag end back over the standing end. And I want this loop here that I'm creating to be at least a foot long. See how big that is? That's, a, that's kind of about the starting size I want, like that. And then I'm gonna make a very simple overhand knot. So to do this, and to make sure I retain a large loop, I'm actually going to slide my hand down, my non-dominant hand, my left hand, as close to this tag end as I can, and pinch that there. I'm then going to fold a little twist, and if you watch my thumb, my thumb's on top, and I roll and create a twist, and my thumb is underneath, and I've crossed over and pinched it with my left thumb and index finger. It's very important that you do that roll and cross them over. And then very simply, you take this standing loop, if you like to call it, and thread it up through that loop you've just created once, and that's a surgeon loop, but this is a double surgeon loop. It's stronger than a surgeon loop. So I'm going to go through a second time. And that's what makes it a double surgeon loop. And then quite simply, you just pull the knot tight. And what it creates, what you're trying to create, is you're trying to create a loop, but it doesn't slide. Right? You can pull as tight as you like, and it doesn't slide. There's a, a non-sliding knot. So let me show you that in the real stuff, just to give you an idea. Here's a reel I've prepared. I've got my beautiful red backing on this gorgeous blue fly reel. And now I want to attach my fly line to it. So if you remember what we did, I'm going to pull off yeah, three feet, put my reel down, come back to the end. I'm going to create a loop here, but I want this loop, as if you remember, I want this loop at least a foot long. So I'm just going to slide it to here and then hold in the left hand, my non-tying hand, my non-dominant hand, the tip of that tag end. Pull about two inches and roll and twist and pinch a loop. Okay, so that's that there. And then this loop goes up. I'm going to slide my hand up to create a small loop. It's going to go through one and two. And then simply pull tight. And voila, you have a non-sliding loop knot called the double surgeon. And it's big. I want to get my hand into it. I want to make sure it's big enough for my hand. If it's not, chop it off. I'll show you why. Talking of chopping off, off comes the tag. And I do like to cut these tag ends really close so I don't have a piece sticking out that can get caught on things. And now, once you've tied that double surgeon loop, you're going to have to attach it to your fly line. Here's my fly line. Most modern fly lines do have welded loops in both the front end and the back end. And you can see there's a welder loop in the end here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this loop that I've just tied and thread it through the fly line loop. Now you'll note that when you buy these lines, and the first time you look at them, these loops are quite elongated and thin. So I like to just push the tip of that loop to kind of make it more round. See how that's making it more round? I like that. That makes it a lot easier to get the backing loop through. Then you pull the backing loop all the way through, 
come to the fly line spool and this is exactly why you want large loop because now you can thread the spool through the large loop and when you pull them tight they lock not beautiful so simple what a great knot so that is the double surgeon loop knot that is used for tying a big loop in your backing and for attaching it to your fly line and then what's called the loop to loop join for putting those two loops together and then simply wind it in and you're set up with your fly line and your backing on your reel once you've got your fly line on your reel all wound in and ready to go fishing you want to go to the river and attach a leader so this next knot is really showing how to attach a leader to your fly line Almost all fly lines these days have a welded loop on the front end. That's great, you do want a loop, it makes it so much easier to attach a leader than some of the complicated knots of days of yore. If you don't have a loop on the front end of your line, then I suggest you get a braided loop, which is just a kind of a thing like this. And a braided loop is just a loop that you can slide onto the end of your non-looped fly line and either glue it or tie it or slide it into place and lock it on there. So in other words, put a loop on the end of your line. It's gonna be far much easier for you to attach leaders to. And the knot we're gonna do, well, it's the same knot that we did just now when we looked at the uh, backing knot. It's gonna be the double surgeon loop. And we're gonna simulate it by saying, here is my purple fly line with my welded loop on the front end or my braided loop. And I'm gonna attach my bright orange leader to it with this end. The knot is exactly the same, except it isn't going to be a foot in size. It's going to be as small as you can possibly make it. So just to run through that knot again, I'm going to fold back maybe two to three inches, pinch it in my non-dominant hand right at the tag end, make a little overhead, overhand thing like that with a twist, poke the loop through once. That's a single surgeon loop. Poke it through twice. That's a double surgeon loop. And then pull tight. And in this stuff, you know, it's not going to seat down very well, but this is the gist of the knot. So I've got a much smaller knot here as a result of that. So I want that little tiny knot. And then once you've got them in, you're actually going to attach the fly line to your leader. And there's a great acronym for this. ABBA. What a great band. Shows my age. Dancing Queen, Fernando. There's so many hits. Um, so what does ABBA mean? Well, let's have a look. A... We're going to label this fly line loop, loop A. A is attached, attached. B is the B, it, I'm joining on. A, B, bit. And why you have ABBA is you, ABBA is A, B, B, A. So you take A, put A into B, and then take the end of B and put into A. A into B, B into A. And then you just pull through. And the reason you do it this way is that when you do it right, you get a nice little kind of reef knot, square knot, handshake loop where the two loops are comfortably seated on each other. If you do it the wrong way, like instead of ABBA, it might be, so instead of A going into B, I have put B into A, and if I then take the end of B and poke it through itself and I pull through this way it's still going to be attached but what's going to happen is you're going to have the knot folded back on itself like this and there's a stress point where this loops cutting back into the leader so that's not really good it works in terms of attaching it but it's not your smoothest connection and it's not your strongest connection so ABBA it is whether you like them or not ABBA is how you attach it so let me show you how you do that in real time most leaders, when you get your leader and you take it out of the packet, already have a pre-tied loop. So again, this is assuming that you're in a position where you don't have a loop on the fly line or you don't have a loop on the leader, you can do things about it. So here's my leader on the top of this lovely pre-tied loop, which is tiny and perfect. And I'm going to do exactly what I just showed you here. I'm going to pull out about eight inches, fold it back on itself, create a nice loop here that's relatively small, pinch it, make a little overhand with my twist. And you can see that this is a very large loop. This is way, way too big for what I'm going to end up doing. So I'm actually going to push this loop until it's quite small and pull the little two ends to shrink 
Hopefully you can see that. So I want a small loop here, just about big enough to get my fingertip in. And then I'm just going to do those two turns through. One and two. Pull tight. One good little tip about pulling tight is take something, you know, a pair of scissors, a forceps, something solid, just put it into that loop. And then I like to lick my loops because they'll tighten a lot better, my knots. And then you just reef down on it and you create this nice, small knot. Chop the tag end close. And then we're going to do our little ABBA. Here's A for attached. Here's B, the bit. A goes into B. And then you go all the way down here to the end and thread it through. And just pull that leader through. When you get it right, you have a beautiful loop-to-loop -loop join, and your leader is connected strongly and securely to your fly line. So that's the double surgeon loop. As I said, we use that loop twice. We use a loop-to-loop -loop join twice, each end of the fly line. Just make sure that one on your leader is small and the one on your backing is big. That's loop-to-loop -loop join and double surgeon loop. The next knot we're going to look at is called a triple surgeon knot. Remember the last knot we looked at was called a double surgeon loop, so there's a similarity there. This is a triple surgeon knot. It's a really, really useful knot to know, and this is the point in the video where we talk about the knots you're going to use daily. The other knots you're going to use from time to time, maybe looping on the leader a bit more often, but these ones are the essential knots you're going to use daily. As I said, the first one's called the triple surgeon. What it's used for is to join two bits of line together. Usually, when you've got your leader on the end of your line, and it's a little bit short, or you want to change the diameter of your leader, and you want to attach a piece of what's called tippet to it. So if you're going to attach some tippet to your leader, the triple surgeon's your man. Because it's the triple surgeon, in fact, it's going to do it with this color. Because it's the triple surgeon, you're going to get a rough idea that the surgeon is a common theme throughout all these knots, and it's based on the overhand knot, or the granny knot, if you like to call it that, if you want an English phrase. Um, and it's that's just that basic overhand knot. So we're going to utilize that same knot, but a couple of things about it. First, I'm going to use some bright, bright yellow, so you can see this. This is going to be my tippet, and the orange is my leader. First thing is do pull off the length you want to tie on first. Cut it off. It needs to be cut loose. And then I like to add about six inches extra because the knot is going to take up some. So if I want three feet, I'm going to have three foot six inches cut off. Now you're simply going to attach this piece of tippet to the leader. And a couple of tips about this that kind of have worked out for me over the years of all my, all my fly fishing career and life is that I'm a right-handed person. I'm much more dexterous with my right hand than my left hand. So for me, I have evolved this system that works really well and is very, very efficient. I like the tippet in my right hand. Then I'm going to overlap these two bits of material with a little end pointing each opposite direction. And I want to pull these ends till. In this case, I'm going to maybe have six to seven inches on this side and six to seven inches on this side. Okay, so this is what I, how I'm starting. I've created like a moustache, long droopy moustache hanging down like that. Being right-handed, I'm going to start by pinching in my right hand, take my left hand and slide my left hand all the way down to kind of where the yellow tag end ends and do my usual little roll thumb twist, create a loop, pinch with the non-dominant thumb. I want to make sure these two loops are relatively even. And then simply you're going to thread this orange tag and this yellow tag through the loop to create basically our overhand knot. But because it's called a triple surgeon, we're just going to do that three times. And something I've learned again over the years, just a real time-saving thing, is that if you're pinching the knot in your left thumb and index finger, Use your middle finger and your ring finger to grip the two pieces you're putting through here. And then use your index finger of your dominant hand, stick it in the loop, twist it around those two, pull through. It is so much quicker doing this than trying to fiddle your way and faddle and thread the little tag ends through it. So just evolve a really fast, efficient knot process. Once you've done that three times, you've created the knot, now we're simply going to pull the knot tight 
and then hold all four ends. Don't accidentally drop an end like this and pull tight because you have some loose coils. So I like to hold, make sure I'm holding all four ends evenly. Give it a good reef down and cinch that knot up. And that's the triple surgeon knot. So it's a wonderful knot for joining two bits of line together, tippet to lead or two bits of tippet together. Let's take a look at that in reality. A little harder to see because it's also using monofill and difficult stuff. So I've got a leader on the end of my line here. And I've been fishing away in my leaders seven foot long. It's a little bit too short. I need to lengthen the leader. And I'm going to join on some tippet material. And this tippet material I'm going to put on is a funny old thing because you can see this is multiple colors. It's, a, it's alternating chartreuse and pink. I'm going to pull off three feet plus six inches for the knot. Um, if you really get into fly fishing, you might come across a technique called Euro nymphing, and Euro nymphing is a is a fly fishing style that uses a lot of color indicator material like that. And I'm just using it here for visual, so you can see it. I wouldn't put this on the end of the line; I'd just put regular clear tippet on the end. But this one, you'll be able to see. So, how do you do it? Well, let's just show you that again all together. I'm going to create. I've got my tippet in the right hand because I'm right-handed. I'm going to overlap the two and pinch. I'm going to pull this tag end down so it's about four or five inches. And I'm going to pull this tag end down so it's about four or five inches. And then I'm going to pinch it in the middle with my right hand and create my moustache. Look at that droopy moustache right there. Now, another little tip I found over the years of practicing knots is at this point in time, when you slide your left hand down towards the tag end here, before you tie the knot, just lick between the two fingers or two hands. And what that does is when you create your twist, it sticks those two bits together and makes them a single piece. Much better than trying it dry when they separate. So I stick it under my left thumb and index finger, utilizing this trick I showed you. Grab with the middle and ring finger, finger in, pull through one, grab, in, pull through two, grab, in, pull through three triple surgeon and then as you start to pull tight watch your knot as it pulls tight and you get to a point where it goes into a figure of eight it kind of jumps doing it so there see what a little jump now that jump is a sign of what you do next which is moisten your knot again i'll tell you why later on moisten the knot grab all four ends pull up and i like to give a nice little tug a nice little hard snap to make sure that knot is seated really really well then you're going to chop the tags off One tag, two tags, and you are ready with a fresh bit of tippet onto your leader with a beautiful knot, very, very strong knot. This knot is about 85% strong. All knots weaken the line, so be careful when you're tying knots because they all cut and weaken. But this one's a high strength knot, about 85%, really good knot to know. It's easy to tie, it's strong, it's a knot you're gonna use almost every single day. And that is the triple surgeon, the knot I like to use to attach tippet to leader. The final knot we're gonna look at is probably the most important knot, and certainly not that you're going to use the most time on the water, and that is how you attach your fly to the end of your line. It could be line, leader, tippet, whatever you want to call it, but you've got to attach a fly to the end of it somehow. This knot's called the improved clinch, and again, I'm going to show you in this highly visible stuff first to give you an idea of how to tie it, practice it, get the hang of it, and then I'm going to show you how to tie it in the actual real stuff. And to simulate the hook, we've got a giant bolt with an eye, it's like your hook eye. Okay, so I've got a nice eye leg like that. Um, this is gonna be my hook, and this is gonna be my leader or tippet material, and I'm gonna show you this knot. So I'm a right-handed uh, attire, right-handed cast, right-handed everything, so I like my dexterous moves to be in my right hand, so my fly is gonna be in my left hand, and the leader and tippet material is gonna be on my right-hand side, and I'm set up. Okay, so this is how you do it, it's quite easy. I like knots that are easy and strong. Those are the backbones of good knot tying in fly fishing. So how you do it is you're gonna thread the tag end through the eye of the hook like this and pull the tag end back on the standing end to, so you have kind of a, you know, like that. So it's threaded through. I like to overlap by six, eight inches. I'm gonna do a little bit more for this material. And then one little tip, which I'll show you shortly why, is I like to slide my left hand over the eye and pinch the material an inch or so in front of the fly. Then 
I'm going to wrap this tag end around this standing end in fishing terms, about four to six times, say five times. It won't work with this, so I'm only going to do it two times, but wrap it around once. I use my middle finger and ring finger to pinch. Wrap it around a second time. And that's about all I can do with this where it's going to work. And when I slide my left hand back, you'll note that there is a large loop here. This tag end now goes through that loop. And then the act of doing that, let me do that, show you that again. Watch what's going to happen here. The act of doing it creates another loop. If I tighten this, that's called a clinch knot, just on its own. So it is a variable knot, it's a good knot. But what makes it an improved clinch and stronger is your tag end goes back through this new loop here. So I bring the tag end back through the new loop. I pull the tag end and the long end like this to tighten the knot. And then I slide my hand down the hook and just slide that puppy up. That is the improved clinch. Chop off the tag end. And one thing about chopping the tag end, this is the, about the only knot that I would recommend you leave a little stubby bit at the end. I don't chop it flush, I chop it so there's a little stubby bit here. And that's kind of a little safety. My dad would say belt and braces. It's a little safety. If you don't tighten this knot fully and a fish pulls hard, this tag end can slide a little bit through the knot and I've just got a little bit of leeway. So that's a safety tip there. Gives you a little bit more chance of landing those monster fish that you're hopefully gonna catch. All right, on to the actual material. I have a fly here and I'm trying to get rid of this stuff out of the way. And I have some highly bright, visible yellowy stuff again. Again, don't use this for fishing, not attaching a fly to. This is just so you can see it. Use the clear stuff. Fish will see this. Um, and then one little tip that I want to add to this section is that sometimes you're going to buy a fly and you're trying to thread the tippet material through the eye and it doesn't go and you can't quite understand why it doesn't go. Well, frequently you will find eyes are bunged up with a bit of varnish, a bit of glue, and you're threading your way through and you can't get it through that glue. If that happens, take the point of another hook and stick the point of that hook into this eye and just kind of ream out the uh, glue. Get in there like that. Just ream it out with a hook point. Okay, and that means you've got a nice clear eye. You don't have to do this every time, just when those flies that you can't thread the line through. I, with this fly, I'm gonna pull this foam back so you can see, it's called a chubby Chernobyl. Great, great fly. Gosh, this catches a lot of fish. And let's show you the knot. So, material on my right, hook in my left. I'm going to thread, I'm going to turn the fly upside down this time because it's easier to thread through that way. And then I like to slide, as I said, about four to five inches back here like this. So the first tip I told you with that yellowy stuff was to slide your left-handed grip over the fly and pinch maybe half an inch from the hook eye. Pinch it there. And I do my five wraps, as you can see, I'm utilizing that middle finger and that ring finger. One two, three, four, and five. And then, of course, the tag end. Watch my left hand here. So I slide the left hand back, and what I've got is this lovely large loop. So, okay, so that loop there is big. And because it's a big loop, it's very easy to thread the tag end through. If you don't hold that monofill, you get a smaller loop, makes it a bit harder. And then you've got this little bit here, that loop you created, this is the clinch. Now I'm gonna make it the improved clinch. So I just take that tag end over that and pull and tighten up until that's kind of semi-tight like that. Now another tip as you tighten this knot, as you'll see here, these two legs are crossed over a few times. So I like to spin, untwist them, which is that way, lick mine up, and that untwisted knot will slide up so much better when you untwist it than if you just pull it tight. There's that beautiful knot. Chop off the tag end, leaving a little stub. And that is the improved clinch. Said so very good knot, very strong knot, easy to tie, quick. All the assets that you need for a good knot got to be quick, they've got to be strong, and they've got to be easy to tie. And really that fly knot there is, is probably the best knot anybody can use to tie your fly on to your leader or tippet material. So there are a couple of little extra bonus tips, if you like. One of the reasons you lick your knot tight 
is that any knot in nylon, monophyll, fluorocarbons, leaders, when you tighten those knots, if they're dry, the friction of the knot sliding over the standing end can result in weakening the standing end. It can also crink it and make it a little curly-whirly. So if you lick every knot before you tighten it, especially the ones in your monofill, they will slide up better. It's basically a lubrication. Slide up better and give you a little bit more strength to your leader. That's a great thing. And the other little tip I'd give you, especially with a hook knot, is before you throw it out there and hook this beast of a fish that you're trying to catch and find that you accidentally tied a bad knot and it comes undone, before you do that, test it. So I like to get my fly and stick it in the handle of some scissors or in, my, in a zip, and you just put it in, pull as hard as you dare, and you're testing it. Right? That's a really important part before you fish. I would also do the same with that leader to tip it knot, the, tri the triple surgeon we did here. So before I'm gonna go fishing, I'm just gonna test it with a couple of little snatches. See, that's why you test it. Yeah. So always test your knot, because if you have a bad knot, it's way better that it breaks right there for you now than when you're on the water. And the last little thing I want to talk about is a lot of people, you know, that's quite a few knots to learn. Some people, kids particularly, young kids, want to have keep it really simple and just learn a single knot. And this last knot, the improved clinch, you can actually use the improved clinch for the entire tackle setup. So I'm going to clear the decks here, set myself up, and just show you how you can use the improved clinch for everything in your fly fishing rigging. I've rigged everything up here to show you that, and I'm going to just do it in the big visible stuff because it's so much easier to see and just kind of simulate it. But I just want to give you an idea of how you can have one single knot to rig up the entire gear. In case you hate knots, you just want to keep it dang simple and learn one knot, that improved clinch. So what have I got? Well, let's say this is my fly line with its welded loops in both ends. Beautiful, that's how it comes. And the first thing I'm gonna do is attach my backing to the fly line. There's a loop on the end of your fly line, so guess what you do? You thread your backing through that loop, no knot in the backing, no loop knot, and you just tie your improved clinch, your five turn improved clinch. I'm only gonna do two because it won't seat up. One, two tuck it in. I'm not going to improve it because again, it doesn't seat up very well in this thick stuff. Tighten that up, lick it, tighten, snap off the tag, backing to fly line with improved clinch. At the other end, your leader is done exactly the same way. Here's the front of my fly line with this beautiful welded loop. And here's my highly visible leader. So I'm going to attach my leader to this fly line exactly the same way. So I take my leader with no loop through do my five turns, one, two, three, four, five, make it a clinch, make it an improved clinch, tighten that thing up, top of the tag. So now my leader is attached to the fly line, again, with the improved clinch. And now for this next part, to attach the tippet to your leader, you actually need something that's rather cool. It's been out on the fly fishing scene a number of years. They're called tippet rings. And tippet rings are little rings there are about 10 of them on this little clip here, tiny little things. They come in different sizes in case you've got bad eyesight. Uh, this is the smallest one. This is a trout one, so it's perfectly applicable for trout. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to take the tippet ring off the clip, and you'll see what the tippet ring is. The tippet ring is just a little tiny ring like that. They're very strong. These ones are 45 pound in strength, so way stronger than the leader or tippet I'm putting on. The trout ones are 25 pound in strength, so again, super strong. They'll never break, but they are a little perfect circle. And why that's important, well, let me just show you. And to simulate the tippet ring, we're gonna go back to our big old eye, the big old bolt thing, the eye bolts, right? There we go, big eye, and just imagine that this is sheared off here, and I just have the ring. You can probably see where I'm going with this. All I'm gonna do is take the end of my leader, thread it through the ring, I've got to do right-handed, because I am. Thread it through the ring, do my five-turn clinch. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Thread the tag in through and improve it. Not going to do that because I want it to be sliding up. Doesn't slide very well in this thick stuff if I do five turns and improve it. Pull that super tight, chop off the tag end. Now the tippet material, 
So I'm going to use purple again to simulate it. And really what I want to do is I want the leader on one end, and then directly opposite the leader, I'm going to do an, the same improved clinch knot. Five turns. Da -da -da. And improve. And tighten. Now those two turns. That's why you do the improve, you see. Tighten like that. And so what you've got is your two materials are either side of this tippet ring. The tippet ring is in the middle. And again, you've utilized the improved clinch on both of them, so that knot works. And, and to be fair, the tippet ring actually isn't just for beginners. You might think, watching this, the tippet ring's for beginners, but I use a pile of tippet rings in all my fishing, whether it's steelhead or salmon or trout fishing. I think the tippet rings are awesome. And one of the reasons I like the tippet ring is because I can tie a tippet ring onto the end of my leader, and then every time I want to add a bit of tippet, I just chop this piece off, add a bit, chop it off, add a bit. This leader never gets chopped back, it never gets shortened, it never gets a problem because of that, because the tippet ring's always on the end. So if you have a tippet ring on the end of your leader, you attach it with your improved clinch knot, and you'll find that's a really efficient way of fishing, and again, doesn't reduce your leader. So that's another little cool tip. And then finally, of course, you would finish the whole thing off with your improved clinch on this end to tie your hook. So you can use one knot to rig the entire gear together. And if you hate knots, or as I said, if you've got a kid you're teaching who's just can't do learn lots and lots of knots, learn the improved clinch knot, get yourself a packet of tippet rings and you'll be able to set everything up as easy as that. And really, that's it. That's your basic knot. That's all you need to know in fly fishing. Hopefully you've got uh, a concept of all those knots and uh, want to get these on the water and go and put them together. So there you go, the basic knots you as a fly fisher need to know to set everything up and have success. Now there's plenty of other knots out there you can learn, but with these ones you've just seen here, you're gonna get by just fine and don't need really much more than that. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, check out our next episode on the basic fly cast, the skill you need to get the fly out to the fish. Really, really important skill to have. Now before I go, I just wanna remind you, please look after the environment. Leave no trace behind you, and above all, respect those beautiful fish you catch. Thanks for watching. See you on the water.